Hello everyone and in this chapter we will learn about the DCS overview. So basically DCS is the distributed control system where the control system is distributed and it is not centralized at a single or on a single controller or on a single uh, algorithm. So basically the controls if you have multiple areas in your plant so you can put uh, several controllers and several uh, automation systems uh, spread out in a large geographical area as well and then then you can see all those parameters and you can control it from a single console or single hmi or workstation operator workstation game workstation but but the controls are distributed so processing is happening on a distributed controllers so this is one good aspect and it is basically dcs control systems are used in oil and gas industries energy utilities chemical plants manufacturing plants and pharma pharmaceuticals as well so where there is some process intensive control loops are running so though in those areas we basically implement dcs systems like if io numbers are very high and it's not a batch process so it's a, like analog uh, control loops are quite obvious in the plan so there we use dcs system so basically what happens like in dcs system we will have the field level instrumentations so those will include like pressure transmitters or pressure temperature measuring instruments or level engineering measuring instruments or even flow measuring uh, instruments so this is one part like uh, the measurement part will be there then apart from that we will have the command uh, part also so there will be solenoid valves there could be uh, motorized valves which, which receives commands from the dcs and then processes further into the downstream uh, equipments so this is about the level level zero like uh, this is the basic level field level and then all these commands are getting integrated to to the controllers via the io card so at this level you will see the uh, multiple io cards will be there and these io cards then forwards all those signals to the controller and then from controller it is being read by the hmi software or the dcs software directly or there is a intermediate software in between and all these communications are not necessarily happening in the uh, tcp ip protocol or or or, or in a uh, or in a very known protocol it could be their proprietary protocol it could be modbus it could be dnp3 it could be iec6850 so so it, it it depends on all field bus protocol protocol so the protocol could be different so communication between this io cards to the field instrumentation that protocol could be different but when, when we go on the upper levels in the DCS, we will find that our uh, TCP communication is quite obvious. So basically we were discussing about like all these signals are then connected by uh, this uh, controllers and then uh, uh, they, these are forwarded to their respective uh, HMI software and then that software processes those information and operator can uh, check and configure and program from their respective softwares. Then also we have uh, engineering workstations and operator workstations in our plants uh, in DCS so from engineering workstation what we can do we, we can program those uh, controllers uh, whatever it is if it is a turbine control in a power plant we can put a new logic into that we down we can do download a new logic we can modify the logics the business logic what is getting executed we can uh, do all those graphics tasks we can do set the archive and everything from the engineering workstations so basically purpose of engineering workstation is to configure this thing then we will have historians also the purpose of the historian is to uh, save the analog process data or digital process data or whatever we configure so it saves everything in it so historian is a big server which has a good storage capacity or or even sometimes historian is just a software and it trans takes all those data and saves into a a NAS drive or a SAN drive on, on the network. It depends on the what type of DCS we are using. Then, then we can have the control servers where the actual application server runs. So in case of the Siemens, it's uh, like SPPA T3000 runs on the application server uh, and then, then it is getting accessed by the thin clients. So thin clients could be engineering workstation, it could be operator workstation. So this is how DCS uh, system is set up in uh, different plant premises. Now, if we, if we go uh, more above, then we'll have the operator workstations. So operator workstations have only operator rights. So operator can give commands to the wall. So all the commands related to the process, which, which, which can impact the process parameters, like changing the drum level, changing, changing the uh, heater level or 
or or turning on a motor or turning off a motor or uh, putting a, a system into auto by taking back to the manual giving the load set point giving the control set point so all these type of activity related to the process control so because the operation people are they are more aware of the process what they want what how 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 to run the business and how to run the plant you know so that's why these operator workstations are required so that they can operate from there now uh, apart from the operator workstations there could be other other uh, solutions also that that could be a management server so uh, management server like uh, it could be a messing monitoring system where which uh, which monitors the complete machine it monitors the vibration of the system it monitors everything uh, other other like other details healthiness of the system so those types of management server we can take uh, backup of the switches from this management server so basically if, if the network architecture is designed in such a way that uh, we can do the management task from a server then that that is called a management server sometimes management LAN is also different in some of the plants so uh, one of the server could be the OPC. OPC is the object linked process control server. So what it does, it gives an interface so that you can communicate to other system, third party vendors also. So let us suppose if you are using a DCS of uh, Siemens and you want to send some data to the ABB solution, it is in the same premise or, or, or at a just 100 meter or 200 meter or within the same plan then you can use the OPC functionality. What it does, it is a OPC is a protocol which converts any other uh, any other uh, language to a common common format so that everyone understands this OPC and we can transfer our tax values and, and, and other things also. So let us suppose if you want to transfer one data, one process data from one location to another location, then we should, uh, uh, and both are the two different OEMs. In that case, we can use OPC to transfer all those data from one point to another point so and other types of application servers also it could be possible then um, yes in dcs also you might have often seen that uh, some data is also going to the cloud to mis to sap servers or to other 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 places so this is how a generic uh, architecture of dcs looks like uh, uh, in detail or we can say it's a high high level uh, view of, of a dcs then let's see some of the examples of the DC solution. So he, here we can see it, it is a sample uh, architecture of SPPA T3000. So SPPA T3000 is a DCS solution by Siemens and uh, this is the name of their software and the solution. So what, how it looks like. So uh, in the field, uh, it starts from the IO card. Uh, so these ETT200 modules are the IO cards which are, uh, which are connected to a S7, uh, 300 CPU here in this picture it could be 400 410 or, or some other mm -hmm. PLCs also then uh, uh, all, all, all the automation uh, related things are connected to the automation servers so automation servers uh, you know, hosts this uh, uh, application and uh, so basically automation server uh, is any any type of solution it could be a as3000 we can say that as a, a automation server it's a cs3000 it can be told as a automation server uh, in some case, cases we put uh, s7 also and that is also a type of automation server so there is nothing like uh, uh, proper automation server in a rack mounted system so all these uh, controllers like CS3000 or AS3000 is called automation server. So, but but there is a separate network of automation. So, all these controllers are connected in a, uh, a network, and that is called the automation highway. Then, then we'll have the time server also residing on the same network, so that all these uh, devices, whatever is connected, it can be synchronized from this uh, time server. Then, application server sits in uh, between. So, this application server will have multiple NIC port on the uh, on the server so this hardware is basically uh, it could be hpdl 360 servers or it could be uh, dell servers or uh, fujitsu servers those servers are there and on, on this windows servers are installed and top of windows server the application software runs and the name of the application software is the sppa t3000 so that that is getting installed and it it is getting data from both the automation highway and as well as the application network so in application network what is application network in application network there are multiple thin clients sitting on 
and from thin clients you can log into this application server and you can access the workbench and you can do all those stuff so now uh, this thin clients you can configure this as a uh, operator workstation you can configure as a guest workstation you can operate uh, configure it as an engineer workstation with a, with a different level of privileges you can define privileges in, in this software also so if you deploy this thin client as an operator it will be deployed with the several restrictions and user can do only the operation related task and if you deploy this workstation as an engineering workstation then operator can then the engineer can do the engineering related task so those types of privilege related you know, softwares are getting installed on this system so uh, this is one type of dcs we can say and another type of dcs what we can see is a delta v architecture here also we can uh, we can see the controllers are getting connected to the field automation and these the, these are delta v io cards and then controllers and all all these are connected to the delta v uh, workstations and uh, similar similar type of uh, topology is there uh, it seems like this is a redundant topology we can see here also it is redundant so what is the meaning of redundant like in case of the one link fails other links will remain alive and system will uh, will not get down so this is done for the high availability to avoid the DOS attacks and all those things so we'll just study about these things in the, our upcoming slides so these two architectures what we are seeing here these two are the architecture of the DCS example so I think for this cyber, this is a cyber security course for this, uh, we will not deep dive into the DCS because uh, we'll focus on the cyber security. So let's, let's move to the next topic. Thank you.